Welcome to Click, I'm Spencer Kelly, and welcome to Trafalgar Square in the heart of London. Now, most of the time, this is a bustling tourist attraction. You've got Nelson's Column there, you've got two great big fountains there, and over there, the countdown to the London Olympics. At the moment, though, this place is still in a little bit of disarray, ever since it was occupied by demonstrators during the recent massive protests against government spending cuts. Although much of the protest passed off peacefully, a separate group peeled away, looking to cause trouble. In apparent retaliation for the cuts, symbols of wealth came under attack. The police thought they were prepared, ready to use techniques they'd developed over decades of riot control. But this time, the protesters were taking electronic countermeasures. In order to stop the authorities from discovering its planned target ahead of time, the group UK Uncut used Twitter to announce the location after the march had started. Within minutes of the tweet, hundreds of supporters have raced to occupy luxury food store Fortnum & Mason. But while some damage was done during the most recent march, it seems like these during last year's protests against university tuition fees that the authorities really wanted to avoid. If trouble does flare up, then the police try to control it using a controversial tactic called kettling. Now, this involves funneling protesters into one area and then sealing them in, often for hours on end. And that's exactly what happens here in the square. The idea is that with nowhere to go, the protesters will simply get tired and bored and want to go home. But kettling has been criticised as being indiscriminate, allowing innocent bystanders to be caught inside the cordon. And here too, technology played a new role, this time to direct people away from trouble. Working from a location in London, this group of students have passed up their chance to march in order to create and run a smartphone app called Suki. Their aim was to collect messages, tweets and photos from protesters all over the city, try to make sense of what was going on, and then send that data back to users of the app on the ground. Suki provides an inbuilt compass which gives an indication of the best direction to move. Red could point towards a police cordon or kettle. A protester caught in trouble should follow the green direction to escape. By providing this data to those who need it, the team hopes that nobody would unwittingly be caught in a police kettle. It's a project to help uh, people who are protesting stay safe, stay informed and stay mobile. And what we mean by that is we want to offer information to people so that they can, when on the street, choose where to go uh, with inf and make informed decisions on that and stay safe if they choose to. You know, basically we're giving them information. To make the compass work, the team had spent hours painstakingly tracing maps of central London, marking everywhere that a road could be blocked or closed by the police. All the lines start green, but as information is sourced from the crowd, they start to turn red, warning those on the ground of a potential danger. The Metropolitan Police was also trying to direct people away from trouble by tweeting details about its cordons and its plans for kettling, and it supports applications like Suki, which make that information easier to understand. Currently, the app only works if the team manually monitors and collates the information. Eventually, one day, we hope that Suki won't need people in a room and it'll be a kind of decentralised thing that could be used um, in, in a climate in other countries where this kind of situation would, wouldn't be as easy as it is in the UK. And during the last few months, we've certainly seen some events in which avoiding clashes with the authorities really was the difference between life and death.